Hello and welcome to Climate State, a weekly to bi-weekly broadcast on what's going on with the Earth's climate system. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the north. So I want to take some time to address some news articles that have been coming up, which are discussing fires in Siberia. There's a lot of fire activity going on up in the boreal forest in Siberia, and this is a very important trend that I think it's valuable to take a look at going on to the future. I'm going to start off with an article that was published on climatecentral.org discussing the recent fires in Siberia. The title of this one is, These NASA Images Show Siberia Is Burning Up. Siberian wildfire season is off and running with multiple blazes searing the boreal forest and tundra. It is the latest example of the vast shifts happening to the forests that cover Siberia and the rest of the northern tier of the world as climate change alters the landscape. Those forests are burning at a rate unheard of in the last 10,000 years due largely to rising temperatures. They contain vast reserves of carbon stored in trees and soil, and when they burn, they send that carbon up into the atmosphere. That creates a very dangerous cycle of more severe wildfires and ever-rising temperatures. The current constellation of conflagrations had burned through roughly 133,000 acres to the west of Lake Baikal in southern Siberia as of last week. Strong winds have sent smoke spiraling hundreds of miles to the northeast, impacting air quality across the region. NASA's satellites captured the scene on Friday from a few different vantage points. The Aqua satellite captured the extent of thick plumes of smoke and fires dotting the region. Both show a stunning breadth of the impacts wildfires can have. According to NASA Earth Observatory, scientists are also investigating signs that the fires were burning so intensely that they altered the local weather. There's evidence of pyrocumulus clouds formed, a phenomenon that occurs when wildfires burn so hot that they cause localized convection and eventually forms clouds. The region where the fires are burning has been a hot spot on the global temperature map. Since November, temperatures have been up 7 degrees Fahrenheit, or 4 degrees Celsius approximately, average, with some months far exceeding that mark. Climate change has been driving up temperatures around the world, but the northern tier of the planet has seen temperatures rising twice as fast. So... Last week, I went through this and was pointing out a couple of different temperature anomalies, and we saw a large temperature anomaly over Siberia. And this temperature anomaly was over the fire zone and was very large in extent, covering essentially about a third of Siberia. And in many places, temperatures were 10 degrees, almost 15 degrees warmer than average for this time of year. These are really, really unheard of temperatures happening in these types of of, of biomes, and when you start to have temperatures this high, you can get a lot of drying if there's not enough moisture coming into the region. So dry weather plus higher temperatures means that you'll have a lot more fires. I think it's important to note that forest fires are, of course, an important part of the forest life cycle and regeneration of the forest floor as well as soils within the forest. However, when you start to have repeating large forest fires happening often throughout the fire season over a much larger extent, you'll actually end up with a sort of desertification, and at the end, you'll get a sort of grassland biome. Now, the burning down of the boreal forest does not spell well for life on Earth, because the boreal forest is responsible for a huge amount of the oxygen generation on the planet, as well as CO2 uptake. So the burning down of the forests in Siberia is an important indicator because what it actually represents is the forests becoming a carbon source rather than a carbon sink. So regarding abrupt climate change, the mass lost in the Siberian forests is going to be a critical indicator moving forward. So I want to take some time to swing over here into Earth Knoll School and take a closer look at what's going on with some of these forest fires. I've tried to center Earth Null School here in a way that's similar to what is seen in the satellite images, the NASA images that I've shown of the smoke plumes coming up from Lake Baikal. And for geographic reference, I've centered my pointer here on the Russian port city of Yakutsk, which is on the Liana River flowing up from Lake Baikal. To the northeast, we have the Kamchatka Peninsula, and to the southeast, we have Japan. I want to take a look in particular at the chem box here and just take a, a moment to examine the amount of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the fire zone. We're currently taking a look at the carbon monoxide values, and if we click around, we can see that the background CO level is around 100 parts per billion. And typically, we only see elevated levels of carbon monoxide around forest fires, industrial sources of pollution, or perhaps volcanoes. I want to take a moment to zoom in here on the fire zone and 
see what kind of CO values that we have around the fire zone. For example, if we take a look at this plume here, we have extremely high levels of carbon monoxide output from these fires, 5,918 parts per billion. And for example, if we click down here in this, we have almost 9,000 parts per billion by volume of carbon monoxide. And we can see that this is a very large extended plume indicating that we have multiple fires burning simultaneously in this region. Also, we have some fires burning here to the northeast with quite high output of CO, as well as down here to the east of Lake Baikal, also around 5,000 parts per billion carbon monoxide by volume. If we zoom out here too, I also want to take a look at the carbon dioxide levels, the CO2 levels in the region of the fire zone, because I think it's quite instructive in terms of carbon uptake and carbon emissions from, from the boreal forest in general. So I'm going to come over here into the overlay panel and select the carbon dioxide and take a look at what's going on. We can see that in this region in particular, we have very low levels of carbon dioxide relative to the 410 parts per billion average that we're at for the planet right now. For example, over here, we have 386 parts per million. If we come over here, we have 396 parts per million. And over here, we have 388 parts per million. However, in the emission zones, we'll find very, very level, high levels of CO2. For example, down here, this fire, we have a lot of output, almost 500 parts per million CO2 coming out of this fire zone. And what's going on here is that this is essentially the boreal zone. And you can see the boreal zone during the summer when you have a lot of photosynthesis going on, carbon dioxide levels are dropping over Siberia. And this is a major carbon sink for the planet. However, with we have these large fire zones, we have this area also emitting carbon as well, which can help to offset some of the carbon uptake of the forest, such that if we have enough fires going, this will start to become a carbon source rather than a carbon sink. And I think that this explains very well what's happening with CO2 levels in the atmosphere, particularly with regards to very large burn areas with forest fires. It's also interesting to take a look at the particulate index and see what's going on. So I'm going to swing over here in particulates and take a look at some of these overlays. We can see that in the fire zone up the Leona River, we have a lot of particulate matter and dust extinction coefficient is higher in these regions, 0 0.06. Whereas up here, we have a background of 0 0.378. And this might be some dust which is coming up from the fire zone. I also think it's instructive to take a look at these values here, this PM sub 1, PM sub 2.5, and PM sub 10. And this PM sub 1, we can take a look at what's going on. There is a tremendous amount of particulate matter over the fire zone, and this is essentially being carried off to the northeast by the prevailing winds, as is shown in the massive image that I showed earlier in the video. Over the fire zone, we have very elevated levels of particulate matter. And for example, we have here 11,196 micrograms per meter cubed of particulate matter. And what this number means is that since we're on the PM1, that means we have 11,196 micrograms of particles per meter cubed, less than one micron in diameter over this area very, very elevated levels of particulate matter, which is very, very bad for air quality. And what this represents as well is a lot of carbon, a lot of incomplete burn products, combustion products, and smoke going up into the atmosphere, in particular over the fire zone. It's a very large area of Siberia that's been affected by these fires. And I think if we zoom out, we can appreciate the size and extent of the fire zone relative to the entirety of Siberia. It's a very, very large burn area going on here. So I think I'm going to stop here with this one, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, for my subscribers, I'd like to mention that I have my first documentary coming out pretty soon on some of the features of the boreal forest, as well as the memorial forest in Scandinavia. And I'm really looking forward to sharing some of the beauty of this ecoregion with you guys. Also, if you guys are interested in supporting the show, please head on over to my Patreon account and send me a couple of dollars. It would really help me keep going with the show, and I'll post a link in the description below if you're interested. Thanks again so much for listening, and I'm looking forward to having you along in the next one.